Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to, <clears throat> excuse me, Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Bahoda. I'm your host, Joe Bahoda, and today I want to talk about something that's been burdening me, and it's a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and that, that is how Christian television and Christian television networks like TBN, Daystar, um, Inspiration Network, The Word Network, and even back in the day, you know, Praise the Lord Network when, you know, uh, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, you know, or any other Christian network television you can think of, really ruined uh, Christianity in America. And because it may have started off good, and there, now there'll be some of you right now that are, may get be upset right now because some of you may have gotten saved um, watching Christian television. And first of all, let me just put the disclaimer out right now. I'm not saying that Christian TV cannot be used by God as a means of evangelism. Because again, some people may have gotten saved watching somebody on TV. <clears throat> I'm not denying that at all. Um, God can use different mediums. And television definitely is a medium that the Lord can use. Absolutely. I'm not, I am not coming up against that at all. So please don't email me in the comments and say, well, I got saved under, you know, watching such and such ministry on TV. You know, I, I, you know, I got saved watching such and such on TBN. So how dare you? But look, I'm not coming up against your salvation experience at all. So if you got saved watching TBN, if you got saved watching 700 Club, or if you got saved watching Inspiration Network, or if you got saved watching something on the Word Network, or Daystar, or whatever, praise the Lord back in the day, or whatever, or some other Christian television, whatever, praise God. I'm not going to seal your thunder. I'm not coming up against your testimony. Thank God that he saved you, Okay. So I'm not saying God can't use that because he can, and I'm not, say, I'm not saying God didn't use that because he very, very well could have. Okay, so I'm not coming up against that. Okay, and I'm not saying God didn't do that because if you got saved and praise God, then he obviously did. What I'm saying is <clears throat> these networks like TBN, Inspiration Network, Word Network, um, Daystar, they're the four that I'm going to focus on today. Okay, uh, and I got some personal stories about Daystar and Inspiration Network in particular, and, and a little bit of TBN too. How they morphed and how they changed. Um, so maybe they did. Maybe they had good intentions to start. Now again, I don't know their their founding their founding father's story. Okay, so I don't know their beginnings, but I know how they morphed over time. And in that morphing process, in the evolution process, if you will, they changed into something that they were never supposed to become. And what they became, and also the preachers, i.e. the wolves they had on their programs, that they used to make money for themselves, wasn't of God. Okay? And they fleeced the American public, at, not only that, but people all over the world, out of a lot of money to keep them on the air, okay? All in the name of evangelism and getting the gospel out there. Now, <clears throat> so that's how it started. That was the, the motivation that they, they told us is like, we have to get the gospel out there. And one of the best ways to do it is via television. So we need these millions and millions of dollars to get us on TV, but then it doesn't do us any good if these countries don't have a satellite to pick our channel up. So now we need to spend millions and millions of dollars to buy these satellites, and then we have to install these satellites in these countries so then they can pick up our channel so then they can get the gospel. So not only do we need millions of dollars to have this program on, but then we need millions of dollars to send to these satellites over there, to install these satellites over there, to put the satellites over there, so then therefore they can get these Christian television stuff over there in these countries. Okay? Unfortunately, though, in certain countries, like, say, for instance, China, who don't, doesn't, since they're a communist country, not only do they not believe in Christianity, they don't believe in any religion, 
Um, they don't allow Christianity to come in to their country. So that model wouldn't work. That's why Christianity has to come in via people, via human relationships, and you have to do it via the underground, you know, the underground church, if you will. So that's how Christianity has to come in. It still has to be the way they did it in the Bible, through one-on-one -on -one individual personalized evangelism. So TV evangelism won't work there. Or if you go to, say, like a Middle Eastern country where the Taliban may be in charge, which are predominantly Muslim um, ran country where Christianity is not welcome and Christianity was not going to be welcomed in there. You know, they're not going to have, you know, let's have TBN praise the Lord, praise the thon marathons going on up in there. So you're going to have to have one-on-one -on -one underground evangelism in order for the gospel to spread in those countries. So TBN, Daystar, Inspiration Network, Word Network, is not going to work there? So in certain geographical locations of the world, that model or what they were selling to us won't work. It's only going to work in certain locations of the world. Certain other locations of the world that it won't. And you're going to have to do what Jesus said in the Great Commission, and that is go into all the world making disciples of all the nations. Okay? Go into all the world. That, that, that Great Commission, that command has not gone away. Okay, and you can't excuse it away by having a Christian TV network and a Christian TV station. Okay, getting getting you a TV station doesn't exonerate you from somehow getting away or skating away from the Great Commission. You still have to go into all the world because there's certain places that a TV satellite can't go. Okay. So you just can't excuse the Great Commission by having a TV Christian network. Doesn't work, okay? Which I'm getting ahead of myself. So there's three things that I, I can think of right now that whether they did it intentionally or unintentionally, but these are the three effects that ruin Christianity in America. Now, I'm not going to blame TBN and Daystar and the Word Network and Inspiration Network fully because these wolves that use their platforms have to take responsibility for it too. These wolves in sheep's clothing, they pimped TBN and they pimped these people to make their names great too. So these wolves are guilty too. But they both pimped each other, so they're both guilty. So I don't exonerate these networks either. They were both wrong. They're both guilty. They both need to repent. But there's three things that I can think of, of how they ruined Christianity in America. Number one, it made wolves in sheep's clothing come out of the woodwork. It made wolves accessible. Why? Why? Because what it did is it gave wolves a platform. I told you this story before, and the reason I can tell the story so profound, I can't say profoundly, wrong word, so openly, is because in his defense, T.D. Jakes told it, this is public knowledge, T.D. Jakes said the reason he blew up, because you got to remember, T.D. Jakes was just a small school preacher from West Virginia, okay? He wasn't this huge rock star celebrity Rock star pastor who unfortunately now is in trouble. I say unfortunately because of the devastation that's causing and the ripple effect that's causing the body of Christ now. But <coughs> he was not always a celebrity rock star mega famous preacher, which I've said in many videos, there shouldn't be celebrity rock star preachers to begin with. Uh, that's never the goal of Christianity. The only rock star in Christianity, if you will, is Jesus. So T.D. Jakes and all these mega famous preachers shouldn't be. Okay. So they're all out of order for being that big to begin with. But T.D. Jakes admitted this to hit in his defense. He admitted this. The reason he blew up, if you will, was because of Carlton Pearson giving him a chance, giving him a platform to preach at Azusa. But then Paul Crouch on TBN saw him and was like, hey, get me that guy, meaning get me T.D. Jakes. So Paul Crouch saw T.D. Jakes and Paul Crouch was the owner and founder of TBN. Paul Crouch said, get me that guy, get me T.D. Jakes, and voila, the rest is history. So 
TBN, if you will, make a long story short, blew TD Jakes up. So what is my point? Number one, these Christian networks, whether they wanted to or not, made wolves, made them easy to wolf. You know the, the old saying, wolves be wolfing? Well, these Christian networks gave wolves a platform. And they not only gave them a platform, they blew them up. They blew them up because it was their name and their image and their likeness going throughout all the airwaves now, and they became very, very famous overnight. Now, these wolves can say, hey, we got to get the gospel out there. We got to, you know, get the gospel all over the world. And, you know, we got to do evangelism. That, that, that was the, that was the, 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 that was the, the excuse or that was the, the motive that they were giving the public. But what was, what was happening behind the scenes really was they were building up their name, they were building up their fame, they were building up their brand, they were building up their marketing, they were building up their church, which in, in, in turn, because a lot of these services they were doing on TV then, they were doing in the sanctuary of their church. So when in doing so, what they were doing is they were building up their church. Therefore, they could make their church bigger. So that eventually they could turn their church into a mega church. So they were really doing free marketing for their church. So eventually they could blow up their church and make their church big and make their church a mega church. So it was free marketing for their church. So their church could blow up. So they were building up their name, their fame, their money, their bank accounts. Okay. Because now their sermons could get over everywhere. So now... Not only everybody in America, but everybody all over the world could now know who they are. And they're like, wow, I've been listening to T.D. Jakes for years. I've been listening to Eddie Long for years. I've been listening to Jensen Franklin for years. I've been listening to, you know, Ron Carpenter for years. I've been listening to John Gray for years. I've been listening to Joe Osteen for years. I've been listening to Joseph Prince for years. I've been listening to whomever for years. Okay. And now you're well known all throughout the world. And what you really did is now say you can go to South Africa and, or you can go to any parts in the Philippines, any, in the United Kingdom, and now people know you before you even get over there. So now what's happening now is so now it's very easy for you to establish churches in other parts of the world, and they say, hey, I want to connect with a T.D. Jakes, and I want to connect with an Andy Long, and I want to connect with a Creflo Dollar, and I want to connect with a Kenneth Copeland, and I want to connect with a Jesse Duplantis, and I want to connect with a, you know, Joyce Meyer, or, you know, whomever, because they know you because they saw you on TV. And they want to connect with your ministry, particularly if you were part of the Prosperity Gospel Word of Faith movement, because you want that financial anointing that they were preaching on, which I'm going to get to here in a little bit. So guess what? So now you have these pastors that would get churches underneath them. So now what you do is these wolves now have a whole entire empire network all throughout the globe, all throughout the world, all because they started off of TV, because TV got their name, their name, image, likeness, marketing, branding, all of that, all throughout the world via TV. So these wolves could be wolfing all out in the open public now. These wolves weren't hiding. They were doing it right in our faces. They were doing it on national TV, guys. These wolves weren't doing it in, in behind, behind the curtain. You know, this wasn't the Wizard of Oz, never mind that guy behind the curtain. No, they were doing it right in our, right in our face. They were doing it right on national TV. They were building their brand. They were building their name. They were building their fame. They were building their marketing. They were building their worldly empire right in front of our face. And they got away with it because they would, all, they would, they would label that as, look at the favor of God. They would label that as the favor of God. Look at what the Lord has done. We started as a 500-member church and now we have a 20,000 seat mega church. Look at what the Lord has done. We started with 500 members. Now we got 20,000. Look at what the Lord has done. No, what you did 
is you use Christian television to build your worldly empire. That's what you did. And you did it all in our face. It wasn't secretive at all. The other thing of why it ruined Christianity is because it made us Americans lazy when it came to evangelism. Why? Because, like I said earlier, it didn't make us really physically do the Great Commission. Instead of going to all the world, we got big, fat, happy, and lazy because they're like, why do we got to go to the world where we can just sit in our couches and just preach, or in this case, sit in our churches, preach the gospel in our churches with our suit and tie. I don't, I don't have to get dirty or even leave our churches. I can stay in the four walls of our church preach the gospel, which a lot of times it wasn't the gospel because wolves have whack theology, but I can just stay in the, in the four corners of my church, preach the gospel within my church, which really wasn't the gospel at all, which I'll get to, and then have it go out through all the world via satellite, and I never have to go anywhere. So the Great Commission never really happens because I don't ever have to go. So it made Americans in America very spiritually lazy because it killed missions. Because when it came time to actually physically go, a lot of Americans didn't want to go. And then especially when you, when you, when you partner that with the prosperity gospel and word of faith, you know, teaching that the, a lot of these wolves were teaching on TBN and Daystar and all these other networks... Because they were talking about get ready, get ready, get ready, T.D. Jakes, or, you know, God's going to bless you, and, it, you know, it's your season, it's your day, and, you know, harvest, and, you know, God's going to bless you, and it's a new blessing and a new anointing, and, you know, it's your season, and the harvest is coming in, and it's, you know, I, I hear the sound of rain, and it's a harvest, and God's going to bless you all the time. Well, you're like, if God is going to bless me all the time, then who's going to go? Who's going to go to the Middle East and, and witness to you know, whomever, and you may get your head chopped off. Who's going Who's going over there? Nobody. Who's going to China and going to witness to, you know, the Chinese people in the communist China? Nobody. Nobody watching these networks, nobody watching these wolves preaching prosperity, gospel, word of faith, you know, God's blessing me all the time in the, in the, in the fatness of my own home, air-conditioned home. Ain't nobody going evangelizing, watching this stuff. You're going to sit in your house, be big, fat, happy, and lazy because this is the kind of American Christianity that it was producing. I'm going to be me, myself, and I, big, fat, happy, and blessed, and I don't have to go because God wants me to be big, fat, happy, and lazy in my you know, million-dollar house in Mercedes. So therefore, when Jesus says, go into all the world, I don't have to now. I can just sit and do it via TV. And, and I'm going to all the world via satellites and television. And my private jets. At least that, that was the bill of goods that they sold us. So they tricked us in saying I'm going to all the world via TV and satellites when I really wasn't. Which I'm going to get to here in a little bit. So what was happening is, is they tricked us thinking they were going to all the world and they really weren't. So it made us fat and made us happy and lazy. And we weren't going to all the world. And when it came to evangelism, we became really, really lazy. So we weren't really feeling the, fulfilling the Great Commission. We weren't physically going anymore. And why do I say that was the bill of goods that they sold us and we weren't really going? Well, I'll give you an example. Jesse Duplantis, who's like one of the greatest prosperity gospel pimps out there. He's like one of the worst. And he's like a really good friend of Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland's a really, really bad one too. But Jesse Duplantis is like his best good friend. And Jesse Duplantis is one of the worst ones. He's out there too. I used to watch Jesse Duplantis' program. And he used to have this saying. He's like, I believe in God for one billion partners. Now, you got to understand their language. When he's saying a partner, he's basically talking about one billion people that sow money into his ministry. That's what a partner is. It's people that give him money. That's what a partner is. It sounds really cool and good, but when you really break it down, a partner is just somebody that gives him money. 
He said, I'm believing God for 1 billion partners so we can reach 1 billion people. I'm going to say that again. I'm believing God for 1 billion partners so we can reach 1 billion people. And as he said that, there's a picture of a private jet flying across the TV screen. As if somehow Jesse Duplantis, if he gets 1 billion partners, i.e. 1 billion people, that are going to sow some money into his ministry. And let's just say he were to get that, and they only sow $1. You guys realize that's a billion dollars, right? <clears throat> so the idea would be, he gets a billion dollars, and then he takes that billion dollars to evangelize the world. That's the bill of goods that he's selling us. I, Jesse Duplantis, get a billion partners, i.e., I would get a billion dollars in if they sold one dollar. I would get a, at least a billion dollars, and I would take that billion dollars and evangelize the world with it. And then that's why I need this private jet. And then he shows this private jet going across the screen. And then he would fly across the world in that private jet and evangelize the world. The problem is, is Jesse Duplantis, he doesn't go into Taliban-infested Kandahar, Afghanistan and preach the gospel. He's not going into hardcore communist China and preaching the gospel. He wasn't going into war-torn war Sudan when, when the, the war was going on in Sudan. He wasn't preaching the gospel in Sudan. So when these, when these wars are going on, he wasn't going on and flying in there. So, so he's not going into Sudan. He's not going into any of, of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, you know, Iran. He's, you know, Saudi Arabia, all those Middle Eastern countries. He's not going in over there. He's not going there. He's not going anywhere. He flies into the countries where he can either, the gospel's welcome there, or two, he's going where he knows he can go and make money there. Because when he goes, he's going to go and take up an offering, then he's going to get in his jet, and then he's going to leave. So my point is, he's not going into all the world preaching the gospel. It's a lie. He's not going into all the world, guys and gals. So even if he gets a billion dollars, he's not going into Pakistan and Afghanistan and Iraq and Iran and Saudi Arabia. He's not going in. He's not flying into those Middle Eastern countries preaching the gospel. That his private jet ain't flying in the communist China. So he's not going into certain parts of the world. So his TV program is a lie. He's going to go where the, the gospel's welcome or he's going to go where he can make money. That's the parts of the world that Jet's going to go. And the rest of the money, he, I guess he's just going to keep or whatever he's going to do. I don't, I'm not going to accuse him of what he's doing with the money. But I know he has like a $40 million house that he's building. Because he, he blatantly flaunts. You know, he, he's building that house that... Remember that movie Gone with the Wind? Well, he's building that house. Jesse Duplantis is like building that house. And it's like 40 some million dollars. And he blatantly flaunts this. And again, he's saying, this is the favor and the blessing of the Lord. And th by the way, he was asking for another private jet. He's already, Jesse Duplantis has already bought like three of them. He's asking for a fourth one. The other three he gave away to his other preacher friends. Now he's asking for like another 60 million or whatever so he can buy a fourth one. To go to parts of the world that he, certain parts of the world that we know he's not going to go to. Same thing with like these other TBN, Inspiration Network, Daystar. Again, they can, first of all, you can only watch TV if you have a television. In a lot of these third world countries, they don't have TVs. I know. I, when I was fighting the war in Afghanistan, there's people still today in Afghanistan, guys, that still live in mud huts. I know because when I flew in those Black Hawk helicopters, I would fly over their homes. When I, when I was fighting the war in Afghanistan, I flew over their mud hut homes. They don't even have TVs, guys. Some of these people don't even have TVs. So forget about TV, TBN, Inspiration Network, you know, Word Network, Daystar. They don't even have TVs. 
So you're not going to reach, you're not going to give them the gospel via television. They don't have TVs. Secondly, even if they did, where are you going to put the satellite? The Taliban would tear it down because they don't want westernized stuff in their country. So my point is TBN is not going to reach them. So you're not going to go to all the world via TBN. So you're going to have to get off your butt and physically go into all the world and evangelize. Just like Jesus said, the Great Commission didn't go away just because you got a satellite and TV. See, the Christian networks didn't want to tell you this. And it made Americans fat and lazy. And it hurt evangelism because it killed, it, it didn't kill missions, but it hurt missions. And lastly, <clears throat> the other thing it did is a lot of these networks, because they got so big, is they became entities unto themselves to where they needed money to survive. See, what was supposed to happen was, is these, these were supposed to be like ministries that were supposed to come alongside churches, and they were supposed to help local churches to spread the gospel. They were never supposed to be ministries unto themselves because they're not local churches. They're not local bodies of believers. These are believers that work together to help spread the Gospels, but they're not ministries like local churches. Okay? So they're just, they're supposed to be partnering with local ministries to help spread the Gospels. But they're not supposed to be the entity unto themselves. But as they got bigger, they're like, in order to buy satellites, and in order to have airtime, and in order to keep us on TV, we need money to do this. So now what was happening, they're like, crap, we need money to keep ourselves funded. So now Christians, instead of giving to their local church, hopefully they were still doing that, but now they were now giving to TBN. They were giving to Daystar. They were giving to Inspiration Network. They were giving to Word Network. And they're, they're, st they're still doing it today. So what was happening was, in order to keep these channels going, they would have things like, Telethons, or in this, remember, um, TBM would have praise-a-thons, right? And what, and what they would do, and this is where it got really creepy, cheesy, and this is where the wolves would be wolfing. Because what they would do is they would invite the wolves on. This is where they would invite Jesse Duplantis. They would invite T.D. Jakes. They would invite Eddie Long. Every wolf you could possibly think of, TBN would invite. I'm telling you, TBN was notorious for this. Inspiration Network was notorious for the two, and they would invite Mike Murdoch on. And I did a video about this when I, when I, when I talked about Mike Murdoch and how Mike Murdoch basically took advantage of me to my chagrin on this. When he basically was like a used car salesman, he 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 would talk everybody up and how you know he talked about how God just kept blessing him with like you know money or not or like you know clothes and like you know, furniture, and God would give him this, and God would give him that, and, you know, how God blessed him with this, and, you know, he talked for 20 minutes with how people would just give him stuff, and then here was the pitch, hey, y'all, how would y'all like to have it like me, and everybody in the, they would call it a camp meeting, see, TBN has their praise-a-thon inspiration network with David Cirillo, he has camp meetings, see, every, you know, and then Daystar has whatever they call it, right, Word Network probably has whatever they, whatever they have, and they would, the word network would have like, we need a bind them on or whatever. So they all have whatever they call it. And they would have their guest speaker, we need a bind them or TD Jakes. And then they would have their guest musicians on, right? And they would have a week long praise the thon thing. And while they're having their event, they'd have people working the phones and you can call them and you'd, you'd have their pledge of how much money you want to give to TBN and all these networks. In addition to, I guess, whatever you were going to give to your church. And now that you've got the satellite, you could also now start fleecing everybody throughout the globe who had a satellite now. So now you can get money throughout all the world. So it wasn't just Americans you can get money. Now you can get money from everybody in the world. Well, anyway, Mike Murdoch, and I, and I made a video about this. So go back and look at my Mike Murdoch video. Mike Murdoch and Dave Cirillo of the Inspiration Network, they got me and they conned a lot of people from one of their camp meeting meetings. 
because Mike Murdoch, he's like, how many of them, how many of y'all want basically what I got? And again, he went 20 minutes about how God would bless him with stuff. And it's like, how many of y'all want, want it with like that? And almost everybody in the camp meeting raised their hand. And, and he called that the Boaz anointing. You know, anytime God blesses me, Mike Murdoch, he blesses you. And everybody's like, I want the Boaz anointing. And he's like, well, guess what? You can get it. If you just sow a $58 seed for the next 12 months, which really ain't a $58 seed, that's really $696. Basically, if you sow a $696 seed, for, you know, for the next year, you can get access to this Boaz anointing. There's no such thing as a Boaz anointing. These are scams. These are made up. But Dave Cirillo, the founder of Inspiration Network, he went along with this. And then Mike Murdoch said, even if you don't have it, put it on your credit card. And basically put it on credit because you got to get this seed in the ground now. And then he said, this ain't for everybody. This is only the first 300 callers. And, I'm, and then later on, but I'm like, okay, Mike Murdoch, but if I'm caller 301, that means you're going to cut the phones off, right? No. Because then they, then they had the camera and they went over to the phones and you can still, people, people were still calling on the phone. And then what ticked me off, <clears throat> like a week or so later, they kept that camp meeting on replay. So a week later, I turned it on the Inspiration Network and that same Mike Murdoch thing was on replay and they kept showing it over and over. And they, they, they kept re-showing that thing for months, like six months straight, they kept showing that thing. I'm like, Dave Cirillo, how much money did you get? How many people did you con? And if it's only for the first 300 people, is that just for the first night or is it every night that you showed it? I mean, this is just crazy, right? I mean, it is absolutely crazy, guys, how they fleece people. And that's just the Inspiration Network. I told you all this story about Daystar, about how they had, you know, in one of their, you know, raising fun things, where back in the day they had Rod Parsley on there. And this is back when they had Marcus Lamb before he died of COVID, but they had Rod Parsley on there. And they were pimping, you know how they use like certain Bible verses, in this case, Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, Isaiah 54 and 17. And Rod Parsley said, there's seven business people right now. People have been attacking your business. So you need to sow a seed of $5,417 from Isaiah 54 and 17. So sow a seed of $5,417. So basically God will you know, protect your business. And I turned it, but I was like, but something was gnawing at me. Like, okay, like, son, don't leave this yet. So 10 minutes later, I turned it back. And he said, so now there's five of you that still need to do it. So apparently in 10 minutes, two of them did it. That sowed the $5,417. Guys, these are scams. Guys, these are scams. There's nothing in the word that says if you take a Bible verse, put a monetary, financial monetary amount on it, and then say, God's going to bless you because you did some you know, finagling with some numbers. Or if I sow a seed of you know, $54.17 because it comes out of Isaiah 54 and 17, that God's going to bless me because, I, because it's coming out of Isaiah you know, 54 and 17. Or like Rod Parsley did, $5,417. God, these are scams. And again, this was a Daystar scam because this was the Daystar network trying to raise funds for Daystar. Again, you got to know where the money's going. Just like Dave Cirillo when they did it to me. It wasn't going to Mike Murdoch. It was going to, you know, the, the Inspiration Network. And if you put it on your credit card, you're going into debt. You're going into debt via Inspiration Network. So you're you're so not only are these wolves wolfing, but these Christian networks have got the wolves on there to fleece you out of your money, and this money is going to these Christian networks to keep them on TV. So now these networks are fleecing you, and they're using wolves to do it. Which is also one of my last points which is one of the reasons I stopped watching these networks is because since they had wolves on there for so long, the theology that is on these networks are just trash. 
the horrible theology that is on Christian television today is garbage. They're not sound at all. Like a lot of the preachers that are on Christian television today, guys, they can't preach themselves out of a wet paper bag. The theology that is on Christian television today is so devastatingly atrocious. It is horrible. So I stopped watching it because I cannot believe how bad it is. And just before I stopped watching it, which was years ago, it was almost always the same thing. Sow a seed so you can get a harvest, prosperity gospel, word of faith stuff. And usually it was, it was re revolving around sow a seed to us, the network. It was never usually sow a seed to your local church. It was sow a seed to us, the network, i.e. the entity unto itself. Sow a seed to us, the network. And then again, usually they would have a wolf on there that was preaching the bad theology, or in, like I said, in the case of the Inspiration Network, or in the case of, you know, TBN, because yeah, they would have, the, you know, Jesse Duplantis on there preaching his prosperity gospel, Eddie Long on there, T.D. Jakes, all of them were on TBN. Or like I said, in the case of Daystar with the Isaiah 54 and 17, the 5,417, you know, dollars, or 5,417 dollars, they're scams, and Marcus Lamb went along with it. So a lot of these Christian networks, they were part of the scamming too. So they had wolves that were scamming, and the networks went along with it, and they said, Amen, brother. Hallelujah. What a great and powerful prophetic word. So these networks were scammers too. So that means these networks were wolves too. So you weren't just being preyed on by the wolves. You were being preyed on by the TV networks themselves. Because the TV networks, they were wolves too. And they were doing it all in the name of, we got to get the gospel out. And you were giving, really you were being fleeced, all in the name of evangelism. And if you were a part of that, I just want to say I'm sorry because you were probably doing it for the right reasons. You probably had the right motive. You probably had the right motive. But these wolves, the preachers and the networks themselves wolfed you. They fleeced you. And because of all that, they ruined America. Well, not America Christianity, but Christianity in America. For at least three reasons. One, it made wolves build their own personal empires. Two, it ruined evangelism in America because it made Americans spiritually fat and lazy. Three, it made Christian networks become entities unto themselves, which made them ask for money which made them a part of the, the games and the gimmicks and the scams as well. Okay, they were scamming too. And then four, because I guess this, this is the fourth reason, which I just closed with, which means because they had all these wolves on there, the theology was terrible. A lot of the theology on TBN, the wolf, I was going to say the Wolf Network. I, you can call them all the Wolf Network. I, I, I'll, have, I'll, have, I'll give you permission to call them that. TBN, the Word Network, Inspiration Network, Daystar. The theology is terrible. Because there's, there's been wolves on there for so long, for literally for 20 years at least, 20, 30 years, decades now. At least going back to the 90s since, I, since I've known it, because I, I got saved in 96. So my experience has been since the 90s, but TBN's been around way before that. So there's been wolves on there for decades. So the theology has been so bad. And what does that mean? For a lot of us, like, so I've been saved now for 27 years. So what does that mean? That means for a lot of you, wolfy, fleecing, 
praying, not praying like this, but praying, P-R-E-Y, praying on predatorial praying on people theology. You know, wolves in sheep's clothing theology for a lot of, a Christ, a lot of a Christians in America is all you know. You don't know the truth of the Bible. You know wolves in sheep's clothing Bible. You don't know true biblical Christi Christianity. You know TBN Christianity. You know the Christianity that these networks put out. You don't know, and because of biblical illiteracy, since we don't actually read our Bibles in America, a lot of us don't, all you know is the Christianity that they put out on TV, which was horrible, wolfy, trashy Christianity. And if you're like me, that means that's what you grew up with. So by default, that's all you know. So these networks, TBN, Word Network, Inspiration Network, Daystar, that's how they helped ruin Christianity in America. And unfortunately, we are still feeling the effects of it to this day. We're not fully recovered. We are still feeling the effects of it to this day. Hence, that's why I've started my channel, to help people get out and to expose all this but also to help people heal and recover to help people come through the recovery process because there's been so many people hurt because of these networks believing these wolves. Amen? So if you know somebody like that, please reach a helping hand and help your brothers and sisters in Christ who've really been devastatingly hurt by these ministries, by these charlatans, not only by the, the charlatan wolves that they put on there, but by these networks that became charlatans themselves. That fleeced us all in the name of evangelism. So let's help the victims of these networks. And I'll close my broadcast by saying, pray for all the people that have been victimized by these people. And I pray for, it doesn't ruin people's spirits, that they still connect with a good local church, that they find Jesus for real. I pray that people repent for real who've been guilty of these things. And lastly, I pray for that you be like Bereans, that you will read your Bible and you will search the scriptures daily to see that these things are so or not. And if not, you'll throw it out. Search the scriptures daily, guys. Be Bereans so you don't get caught up in these scams. Amen? So these are just some of the reasons why these things have ruined Christianity in America. Anyway, I hope this has blessed you. If it has, please hit the like button. Please share this with as many people as you possibly can. And there may be other reasons why this has hurt American Christianity in America, but these are just the four things that I could come up with right now. Until next time, again, share it. Subscribe if you haven't. Encourage other people to subscribe. Until next time, know that Jesus loves you and I do too. God bless everybody.